Hello students, welcome to another video lecture for ComSci 125 Operating Systems. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, free space management. Remember that in an operating system, specifically when it comes to managing the memory, there should be a way for the operating system to allocate memory to user processes. As we've discussed in the chapter or in the video on the memory API, we have the main interfaces for memory requests, specifically the malloc and the free interfaces. So we're going to look at the mechanisms on how to implement or how a library implements uh, these uh, functions, the malloc and free functions. When it comes to free space management, as we as we discussed in the previous videos, one of the things that we want to avoid is the problem on uh, fragmentation. So far, we have discussed two types of fragmentation, mainly the internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. Internal fragmentation happens when you have uh, a chunk of memory, free memory, that is uh, allocated but not used by a particular process. Whereas external fragmentation happens when there are free memory that are available, but they are not uh, together or they, they are scattered in the memory, thus they cannot be used or they cannot be allocated. So that's the essential idea of managing uh, free space to uh, prevent fragmentation because fragmentation is inefficient. Now, fragmentation can actually be solved slightly by uh, using fixed sizes for the chunks of memory. We will discuss this when we go to the chapter on paging. Free space management is actually hard when we have variable sizes as we've seen in the discussion on segmentation, wherein we have a different size for the code segment, a different size for the stack, and a different size for the heap. So consider this example of external fragmentation. Let's say we have this configuration in the memory. We have 30 bytes of memory as shown here. And let's say a request of 15 bytes uh, is given. Now, given this configuration, can the 15 byte request be satisfied? By looking at this configuration, you will notice that we cannot satisfy this request because this free chunk here is only 10 bytes and this free chunk here, here is also 10 bytes. And both of these chunks can satisfy the 15 byte request. So that is the problem with external fragmentation. You have enough memory, total free memory, which is 20 bytes, but they are not contiguous. That's why we have what we call external fragmentation. Now, in the succeeding discussions, we need to make some assumptions in order to understand the different mechanisms. We are going to focus on user-level memory allocation libraries, meaning these uh, implementations for the malloc and the free. Now, in an operating system, especially in the kernel, it has its own memory allocation strategies also. But in this discussion, we focus on the implementation of malloc and free. 
So here is assumption number two, uh, number two, wherein we have the interfaces for allocating uh, requesting memory, which is malloc, and for freeing allocated memory, which is free. Our priority is to solve external fragmentation. Fourth assumption, once memory uh, from free list is allocated to a client, okay, or a requester, it cannot be re uh, relocated to another location. So that means once the memory is allocated or assigned to a process, it cannot, uh, it stays there in the physical memory. It cannot be moved around in the physical memory. So there is no compaction involved physically. The memory being managed by, by the allocator is of fixed size and contiguous. So you have contiguous chunk of memory and fixed size. Because we will see later uh, the relevance of this. Let's talk about the low level mechanisms for free space management. This is actually divided into three parts. We have the splitting and coalescing step for approaches or mechanism. Then we also need to have some mechanism to track the size of the allocated regions or memory chunks and how to build a simple list inside the free space to keep track of free space. Because we cannot use Malo to uh, manage itself. So there has to be a way to uh, put in some information in the in the free space to be able to keep track of the, the free space. So we're going to uh, learn how this mechanism works uh, later. Let's start with splitting. The idea of splitting is you find a free chunk of memory that can satisfy the request, and then you can split it into two. Okay? Then you allocate the, the desired size to the requester, and then the remaining uh, the difference will be put back into the free list. So let's have an example here. Okay? So we have this memory configuration, which is a three byte heap. Uh, 30 byte heap and this is uh, the same configuration presented earlier uh, when request for memory allocation is smaller than the size of the free chunk so a while ago we tried to request for uh, 15 bytes okay? given this configuration okay, and we have a free list. This free list is maintained by the allocator to determine which uh, part of the heap is free. So it has two fields. Uh, it's basically a link list. So you have the head pointing to the first node. And the, it has two fields, the address, starting address 0, and the total length 10. So in this configuration, we have two free chunks. So we have address 0, length 10, and then the starting address here, 20, and then of length 10. So this is the initial configuration. When, uh, let's say we request for uh, one byte. So if we request for a one byte in this configuration, uh, what we can do is to uh, split the 10 byte free segment. So in this case, if we have a one byte request, that one byte will be allocated in this slot. And the starting address of the free, free chunk will be updated to 21 and the length to 9 because this is the one byte that was allocated. So what happened here is that this chunk originally, which is this one, was split into two. 
So that's what we mean by it, dt. Now the opposite of splitting is coalescing. If a user uh, requests memory that is bigger than free jack size, and if that is not available, then uh, it will not find that particular chunk, right? So what you can do is you can merge a free chunk with existing chunks into a large a single free chunk if the addresses are nearby. So let's say we are given this uh, free list. Okay. So we have address 10, length 10, address 0, length 10, address 20, length 10. Now, since all of these free chunks are near each other, they can be merged together, coalesced, to form one big free chunk starting at address 0 with a length of 30. The next mechanism that we're going to discuss is tracking the size of the allocated radios. Why is this important? Remember that in the malloc interface, you need to specify the number of bytes to allocate or to request from the heap. But with the corresponding free interface, it does not specify any size. It only specifies the pointer or the address Right? So it does not take a size parameter. How then does the library know uh, the size of the memory region that will be uh, placed back into the list? So the solution to that is to store uh, extra information in a header block. And this is how it will look like. If we have a call to malloc like this, so we are requesting 20 bytes, this will be the configuration in uh, the memory, in the heap. The actual pointer will be here, but an additional header will be placed before the actual pointer. The header minimally contains the size of the allocated memory region and it can also contain additional pointers needed to speed up the deallocation. And also a magic number or a checksum, probably a checksum for integrity checking. So this is the illustration, a more detailed illustration. So we have the start of the actual memory allocated, then we have this header and in this illustration, it has two fields, the size of uh, the allocated chunk and a magic number. If you're going to look at the definition of this structure of the header, this will be a typical illustration. So it's a structure with two fields, size and magic. So remember, if you, are, if you have an int, we actually have uh, four bytes, so in total, this will be 8 bytes. The size for free region, therefore, is the size of the header plus the size of the space allocated to the user. If a user requests m bytes, then the library will uh, find a free chunk of size n plus the size of the header. As we've seen earlier, the size of the header is 8. So in the implementation, let's say you are going to implement your own free function, in order to find this information, the header information, you simply uh, subtract the pointer past here and subtract the size of the header to be able to access the header for that particular block. The next mechanism that we're going to look into is embedding a free list. The memory allocation library initializes the heap and puts the first element of the free list in the free space. So the idea here is that the library can't use malloc to build a list within itself. So there should be a mechanism 
to be able to embed the free list in the memory itself, in the memory that is being allocated. So let's start by looking at the description of a node in the list. This will be the node in the list. Take note, it has two fields. It has the size field and a pointer to the next node. Now to build the heap and putting a, a free list, since we don't have, since we're, let's say, since we are implementing malloc, we're going to use the actual system call, called mmap, a memory map, to be able to allocate the actual memory. So this is the syscall. This implemented as part of the kernel of an operating system. So let's take a look at the example. So if we if we're building the the heap for a particular process, so we need to start by allocating the head, by creating the head. So in this case, we call the mmap uh, system call. So let's take a look at the mmap system call. As you can see, uh, this is the description of the mmap. We have the address, uh, the length, we have the uh, protection bits, uh, flags, file descriptor, and an offset. So, going back. Okay, so uh, we have a null uh, value here, right? And then we have the size here, we have protection bits and the flag and the uh, offset zero. Okay. So this will actually return a chunk of memory that is managed by the kernel. Then once this is uh, allocated, okay, we can set the size of this chunk to 4096 minus the size of a node. So that will be the size for that particular uh, free chunk, and then you simply set the uh, next uh, field to null. See if we have an illustration. So, so this is how it will look like a heap with one free chunk. So, assuming that uh, the heap is allocated allocated at this uh, virtual address. So this is how it will look like. Uh, this is the header, and this is the actual uh, free chunk. So all in all, this one is uh, 4 KB, okay. but uh, we have to subtract the size of the header. So what will happen is uh, the actual size will be uh, using this uh, using this formula 4096 minus size of the node so the size will be uh, 4088 let's say now so we have the initial state of the heap or in we have one uh, we have a 4 kilobyte uh, chunk for the heap, which is still free. Now let's say uh, a request comes in. So if a chunk of memory is requested, the library will first find a chunk that is large enough to accommodate the request. So currently we have one big chunk, which is a four kilobyte chunk, actually 4088. Now the library will split the large free chunk into two, one for the request and the other for the remaining chunk. And it will shrink the size of the free chunk in the list. Let's see how this works. Let's say 
that we have the configuration the same setup for kilobyte heap as mentioned previously a request for 100 bytes is made using this call okay. so what will happen is that it will allocate 100 bytes out of the existing one free chunk so not the eight for the header so the original request is 100 but we need to add the header so the actual space that will be consumed will actually be 108 bytes then we have to shrink the one free chunk which is actually 4088 minus 108 and this will be the new size of the free chunk so this is the original configuration now once a 100 byte request is made this will now be the new configuration of the heap so you will notice that the pointer this one here is this one right and then uh, the size is 100 so you have the magic number here and this is the actual 100 free bytes that the process can use and then the head is moved to the next free size this one here and then the size is updated to reflect the new allocation and then we now have the uh, free chunk here which is now reduced in size because we've allocated uh, 108 bytes for the request now this configuration shows that there are three allocations that have been made already and uh, it starts again at 16 kilobytes so this will be the configuration if we have uh, three 100 byte requests granted for a particular process so uh, the head now will be at this point and it will point to nowhere and then this is the remaining uh, free chunk now what will happen if we have to call to free SPTR so we're going to free this pointer what will be the mechanism to do that so if we have this code right SPTR will actually be equivalent to this virtual address 16500 how is this computed this is 16384 so 16kb is 16384 and then we have 108 that 108 will be this location and then the plus 8 will be for the header so this location here is actually 16500 so this is what will happen okay so uh, sptr will be freed okay and the 100 bytes will be uh, placed back into the free list so in the previous configuration head is here so what will happen here is that head will be plate point here as shown this example head is now pointing here and then uh, this one this location which is a part of the free list should be kept right so this will actually be stored as the next element here or the value this address 16708 will be placed here to indicate the next available uh, free node or free free chunk of memory okay. and this will now be the new configuration we have uh, two allocated uh, chunks right okay. and we have uh, 
this free chunk here and also which is 100 bytes and this other free chunk which is 364 bytes. This one is 100. So if you're going to look at the list uh, graphically, it will look like something something like this. Uh, 100, 1, 6, 7, 0, 8, and then uh, the size of the so, uh, the size is 100, or actually this, the starting address is this one. So let me correct this. The starting address is 16500, and the size is 100. And this next node will be uh, 16708 uh, 3764. So this is logically viewed. Right? The, the appearance or the the view of the free list but in the actual physical or in the actual uh, virtual address space of the process the heap the heap this is how it will look like because we embedded into the heap itself the free list so eventually if we free the other allocation this is how it will look like so um, where is the head so the head is pointing here so this is the last node or this is the last uh, chunk to be deallocated so uh, it will point here and this one to point here and then to point here so we now have three nodes in our free list so we have this location here uh, we have this location here and we have this location here so as you can see there is external fragmentation but there's no problem with that we can perform uh, a merging of these free slots to get one free slots again okay, so we can merge all of these uh, free slots together How do we grow the heap in case uh, we run out of memory? So let's say there's no more space available, but the process is still requesting for additional memory. For some operating systems, the, they will create or they will show an error, the out of memory error. But for some operating systems, they can actually allocate or they can actually extend the size of the heap. Remember that in, in our example, the size of the heap is 4 KB. So what if the process requires more than 4 KB? So it's possible to actually extend the size of the heap in the virtual space, virtual address space. So this is how it will look like. Most allocators start with a small sized heap and then uh, it requests more memory from the OS until the run out. So I've mentioned this before that the system calls used to extend or enlarge the size of the heap are the BRK and SBRK system calls. As an illustration, let's say this is the original size of the heap. Let's say this is 4 KB. So this is part of the address space of the process. Now if we call SBRK, we can extend the the size of the heap in a contiguous map actually it can it need not be contiguous but this is how it will look like in the address space as shown here it's contiguous in the address virtual address space but in the actual physical memory it is not necessary that uh, the heap will be contiguous because at some point there might be some processes that are already using this area of the physical memory. We now move on to managing the free space. How do we uh, allocate the free space? Okay. So let's say a request is made. How do we select 
the chunk that we're going to use to allocate the requested memory size. The ideal allocator should be both fast okay, and minimizes fragmentation. Although earlier we mentioned about uh, minimizing fragmentation. This time we're also going to include efficiency, meaning the request should be granted immediately or fail if it cannot be granted. Now, there are four approaches presented in our reference. The first one is the best fit approach. So you find the free chunks that are big or bigger than the current request. So you find all these chunks and then uh, you return the one that is the smallest chunk in the group of candidates. So you search the entire uh, free list and look for a chunk that is uh, large enough for to accommodate the request. And then from this group of chunks, you return the one with the smallest, but can still satisfy the request. The second strategy is the worst fit. The idea is to find the largest three chunks and allocate uh, the requested amount. So you find the uh, uh, largest three chunk, and then you get you give everything to the request, uh, requesting. Uh, uh, not not necessarily give everything, but you allocate the requested chunk, but you keep the remaining chunk uh, on the free list. The first fit, on the other hand, uh, you find the first chunk uh, that is big enough for the request. So, first fit. Unlike in the best fit, first fit is does not involve the searching of the entire free list. Once you find something that is large enough, you allocate that immediately. And you simply, of course, you split, you have to split the chunk and return the free space to the free list. The next one is next fit. So you're finding the first chunk that is big enough for the request. So it's the first step. And then search at where one was looking at instead of the beginning. So you have a running pointer that traverses the, the free list. Once a request is made, starting with a running pointer, which will initially start the head, uh, you find the chunk that is big enough to accommodate the request. Here are some examples of the strategies. So we have, let's say we have uh, allocation request of 15 bytes, and this is the configuration of the free list. So as you can see in the configuration, uh, this chunk here and this chunk here can satisfy the 15 byte request. So if we use the, if we use best fit strategy, this, uh, this will be returned these two these two chunks and then the smaller one will be chosen as the uh, chunk to allocate the request so what will happen is 20 minus 15 so the remaining chunk is added to the free list if we have the worst fit okay, what the worst fit does is to find the uh, largest free chunk and allocate the request amount. So uh, between these two, the largest free chunk is 30. So uh, 15, uh, 30 minus 15. So we'll have the remaining uh, 15 bytes here. So I leave the illustration for first fit and best fit up to you. It's also possible to use uh, what we call what they call segregated list. The idea of segregated list is to keep dedicated list for popular request sizes. The other request will be served by a general memory allocator. Let's say in an operating system kernel, right, uh, the Kernel processes will require usually locks, inodes, and other kernel data structures. They can be allocated or pre-allocated in uh, dedicated uh, free lists. Right? 
However, a new complication will arise because the question now is how much memory should be dedicated to the pool of memory to serve this specialized uh, request for uh, these certain data structures. So solution is called the slab allocator. The idea of uh, slab allocator is to pre-allocate certain sizes okay, for uh, popular requests, for example, uh, for the different uh, data structures. So you pre-allocate them, and then once you run out of space for them, you can, or the, the allocator can request uh, additional memory from the general memory allocator. And then when everything is uh, unused, is no longer used, they can return the memory to the general memory allocator. We also have uh, the body allocation. So in effect, the slab allocator uh, creates caches okay, that can uh, be allocated or could be given uh, immediately to the requesting process. Another approach is the body allocation. The idea of the body allocation is to optimize, basically to optimize for coalescing. Right? What happens is when a request is made, we search for free spaces by recursively dividing the total space, which is the size of which is a power of two, until a block that is big enough is found. So the allocator divides the free space by two until a block is big enough to accommodate the request as well. Let's say we have a seven kilobyte request, and this is the, the size of the, let's say the heap. Okay. So in order to find a seven kilobyte chunk, we divide the 64 kilobyte into two. So we have uh, 32 and 32, then uh, from 32, we divide to 16 and 16, and then 16, uh, 8, and 8. So this, does this request, can this request satisfy the 7 kilobyte request? Okay, so yes, this, this, the, this is the, mo the smallest uh, chunk that can satisfy this request. So this chunk will be returned. And later on, when uh, uh, when this chunk is already freed, it can be merged back to a 16 kilobyte. So this is an example of uh, body allocation. So the body allocation can suffer from internal fragmentation. As you can see here, since we requested only 7 kilobytes, but the allocated chunk is 8 kilobytes because uh, the size should be a power of two. But the coalescing part is simple because uh, you simply have to change one bit in the address. Right? So there are other approaches and they use more advanced data structures to address the scaling, uh, especially for multiprocessor systems. Okay, so we'll stop here and see you on the next video.